welcome to Project Home DIY. My name is Christine Gloat, the owner, founder, and curator of your Project Home Boxes. Thanks for joining us this month when we get to take things to another level, maybe, so to speak. Um, we had such success with our tiered tray three years ago that we thought we better bring another one back. So this time, <clears throat> brought in a round one. And I do know that when designing this, um, I made sure that these lips aren't too deep, the lip on the wood, because we know little things can get hidden in those trays and it's not very much fun to have to prop things up. So we paid extra close care and attention to making sure that this one was designed with um, all thoughts in mind to make this the most functional tray. So love the black accents, um, the black wood, the black ring on the bottom. Just good little touches to an all around good home decor piece. So super simple project this month. Basically, we're just gonna paint the tray or stain the tray, however you choose to do it. Um, and I'll teach you one of my favorite techniques on painting and finishing beads and string together the beads. And that's pretty much it for this project, which is great because again, we're trying to keep it simple for you guys to be able to get a little DIY in there and get creative and make sure that we get those creative juices flowing because we all know how good they are for us. So let's get started. I'm gonna set the beaded garland to the side, um, incorporated the felt beads in this month, which I absolutely love. Um, went with a good navy color, awesome little tube for the needle for threading those. We'll set the hardware to the side as well. Some have had the idea to spray paint this, which is super cool because you could put a really pretty gold accent on the black if you want to um, change that up. Definitely something that can be done. But for me, I decided I'm going to just go with um, a blue. Um, probably it's going to be similar to the blue that's in our kit, in our... Um, are uh, in your starter piece kit. So if you're brand new with us, you do get a starter kit, which has um, the 16 pieces in it, paints, glues, or glue gun, glue, all kinds of stuff. So um, I'm gonna use a paint that's similar to that blue. It's just a tad bit lighter blue. So if you would like a blue like mine, I would say use this and mix it with a little bit of white from the kit. You'll be spot on. Um, I'm going to first remove this bottom ring. I think it'll just make it easier for me to paint and uh, get that paint in there. And I never have <laughs> screwdrivers where I need them. That one was too big. I have a feeling this one's going to be too big too. Ooh, but I do have a screwdriver from a past kit. So sometimes we do include the tools um, that you're gonna need, but this time three screws, we figured either don't take the ring off if you don't have a screwdriver and paint around it, or find a screwdriver and take it off. Um, a lot of our pass kits, you'll have screwdrivers from them, so keep those handy, add to your tool collection. I'm gonna take that ring off just to make it easier to paint and not lose those little screws. Um, but I'm just going to paint these blue, a light blue, um, nice accent. It'll go good with winter. It'll go good with spring. Um, but keep in mind, like if you, you know, later on in the fall or something, want a darker color, you know, these, it is painted. So you couldn't go from a paint to a stain, but you can definitely, you know, paint it a different color or change one tray a different color or you know lots of options there um you can always if you stain it first um you can go from a stain to a paint so you can definitely paint over stain um but you cannot stain over paint if that makes sense so i'm just gonna paint these look at that blue this is like one of our favorite blues, obviously. And if you notice the wall behind me, this is a little greener to it, but that wall color behind me is kind of our signature color. Um, it's called Secluded Garden, a color very close to it that you can get from almost any paint store. Um, 
that's one of my favorite colors. So this will be a pretty accent in it. I have white kitchen counters. So I thought this would be a good color to add into that. So I'm just gonna get these painted and get them drying and then I'll come back on and teach you one of my favorite ways to paint wood beads. And we're not doing them one by one, are you kidding me? When I set out to do crafting or whatever I do here, um, I am the lo me least patient person. I'm not a person that loves long, long process things. So that's never gonna be the way that I teach you. I will find the best and fastest way to do something. So um, mind you, don't be afraid of those wood beads. And a lot of people don't even actually end up using them in their kits because they don't wanna paint them. I don't either. So we're not gonna do it that way, but I will show you an easy way to do it. So stay tuned, let's get these painted. And by the way, I'm not gonna go like super, super thick coverage on this because I do want some wood grain to show through. And I do like that, that look. So there's some knots that are showing through. So we're gonna get this painted. I have all the pieces of the tray painted. They're down there drying. So I'm going to take and start working on the wood beads here. Get them all out of there. Okay, here they are. So if you're going to paint your beads um, multiple colors, you're going to need multiple baggies. But if you're just going to do them one color, which I am, I'm going to stick to a cream color. Um, just take and use one baggie. If you use multiple bags, split the beads up so you have even number or whatever pattern you've chosen to do for the coloring. But I'm doing all mine in an ivory and I'm losing all beads. Okay, so I can put them all in the bag. Oh gosh. All in the bag. And I'm gonna use, let's see, what color? I'm not gonna be super picky on the color, but let's see. Um, from our set of paints, I have alpaca, which is just a little warmer of a white. I think I'm gonna go with that. I'm gonna go with, yeah, alpaca. So take your bag, put your beads in it that you're gonna do the same color. The bag that the all the felt beads came in will be useful, so set that out. In this bag, take and, uh, I think there's a lid on this. I have new paints, and actually they're unmarked, unlabeled paints. <laughs> so they are um, brand new. Ouch, sometimes I can't get these off. But, that's what tweezers are good for. I have arthritis in my thumbs and I've had to learn to do things a little bit differently now. So I'm sure some of you can relate to that. But I'm just squirting some paint in there. You can see that. I don't wanna go overboard with the paint. So less is more to start with and then just Roll the beads around. <clears throat> Essentially, they will be covered. That is it. That is how easy it is. If there's too much paint, they'll be gloppy, and you don't want them to be gloppy because that'll take forever to dry. The holes fill with paint. You get paint down the string, and it just becomes no fun. So make sure you don't use too much paint. I might have on the verge of used too much, but before you dump them out, take a peek in there. I need a little bit more rolling around. Yeah, it looks good. Uh, maybe a little more coverage, which is good to know that they're not being fully covered because then it's not oversaturated. 
and a little bit of air in there. It's easier to move them around when there's an air bubble. Mm, that looks pretty good. Okay, and then dump them out on your the plastic. Any piece of plastic will work. It just allows the beads to not stick to anything. Take a pencil or something and separate the beads out. Okay, so I have these tweezers here, which were actually from another kit, and I'm just gonna separate the beads out. They will dry and, and um, stick to one another if you don't do that. Separate them out. If you don't like the coverage that they did, you can let these dry and do it again. So if it's not um, full coverage enough of, for the beads, you can do it one more time. Just let them let the paint dry, save your bag, and do it again. So that's pretty good for that. All right, so I'm gonna let those dry, and then we will assemble the felt flower, or the felt um, bead strand and then we can assemble our tray and it's done. So let those dry. All right, the beads are dry. So again, if you want a second coat, second coat them and then let them dry again and you'll be, have the coverage that you prefer. Mine turned out great. I'm happy with the coating. So I'm just gonna keep going on. So with our needle that's provided, be very careful with it, but we use this because it's hard to thread felt beads without. So that's provided there with for you. But I'm gonna undo the string and get this threaded through here. Just to make it easy and so I don't keep losing my string, I'm going to take a tiny bit of hot glue where the two strings meet, lick my finger and roll that. Make it as flat as possible because pulling that through those felt beads can get kind of hard. Did I just, oops, I just pulled off all the hot glue. Oops, do it again. Okay, just a tiny bit of glue. Lick my fingers and roll those pieces together. Okay, that might be okay. All right, so I'm gonna start with a felt bead through the center. Let's see how that pulls. Ah, kind of gets stuck. I don't like that. Okay, I made a mess with the hot glue, so I'm gonna cut a little string off. And I'm actually gonna do it right at the needle. Essentially, all I want is to keep the string threaded. So, just a little hot glue to tack that in place. All right, and this felt should hold the beads on. I'm going to do, I think, oh gosh. Let's see. I don't remember how many beads there are. How many did I order? I don't remember. Hmm. Now my glue's too thick. <laughs> you know what? That's all that DIY is. It's problem solving. So just can continue going, solve the problem. I'm going to do four beads to one felt. We'll see how we end up in the end. Okay, scratch that, start it over. Three wood beads in between. I ended up with six extra felt balls and I thought that was way too many to have extra. So I took everything off the string, started over. So three wood beads. I know I can do the math, but I just didn't feel like doing it. So, trial and error. Again, DIY is trial and error.
finish the tassel, I'm going to not, or sorry, not tassel. I had that in my mind because I was going to say I'm not going to use a tassel. I'm going to just finish it off by tying a little knot in the end of the string. Run that knot. Down as far as you can. There's a little extra room in there. Bring all those down. Okay. And I'm going to just put a little bit of hot glue at that knot. If you touch hot glue with your finger, lick your finger first and it won't stick to it. It'll cool it right away and it'll leave the hot glue clear and it will not string. So it's a super easy, quick way to finish off with your hot glue. So little knot, my needle's still at this end, so don't, don't hurt yourself. Okay, I'm just gonna put a little dot Again, if you touch the hot glue, just lick your finger. It'll glue that string in that hole, and then you can cut it off. Even. So there are no ends. It's just a clean cut finished end, which is kind of nice and crisp looking. Okay, that is it for the beaded garland to add to your tray once it's finished. Speaking of the tray, I believe all my pieces are dried. Look at those colors. I love it. Okay, here we go, here's the last. So I'm gonna do a quick sand with my sanding block over all the paint, just to smooth it out a little bit, get some rough part, patches off. Um, paint tin is wet, obviously it's water-based. It'll pull wood grain out, so that's why you get rough pieces after. So just sand a little bit. All my pieces are sanded just wiping it up a little bit here and I'm gonna get to building so I'm gonna put the um, base back on um, I can line it right back up where it went maybe kind of like a puzzle there we go ring is on or the metal ring is on the bottom I kind of want a little more natural wood edge showing assemble the tray so the bottom piece is the one with the screw the silver screw in the bottom so that screw gets placed through the hole hold it with your finger you don't need an allen wrench just tighten that screw on there or tighten the post onto the screw and just be holding the end and twisting the top it will self tighten you don't need an Allen wrench. So it is self-tightened. It is completely tightened. Um, then set your second one on. And that post screws into there. Put 
there's a second. And I'm gonna sand this a little tiny bit more. I really love this wood. It's very easy to work with um, as far as like sanding and um, making it smooth and the finishes, like it just finishes beautifully. So just twist that piece on there nice and tight. If anything looks crooked, just kind of move it to the side a little bit, but everything should just set just perfectly. So there is the tray. We can throw our beads on there and then we can take, you know, a wood sign or so. And some of you are going, wait a second, I don't have anything to be put on the tray. I have you covered. Just stick with us another month. So that is your March kit. And if you join us in April, we'll be able to adorn the tray in many different ways. One kit, many different ways. So for kitchen, bathroom, or general. So I think it will please everybody and go beautifully with your new tiered tray. We hope you enjoy this one. Make sure you join us next month and also join us in our VIP group on Facebook. The QR codes at the bottom of your instructions that were in your box. Join us there where you can see everybody's trays and how they finished them and it's amazing the difference that people can put on their finishing touches on each and every project we do so join us there it's great to have you and see you again next month